Welcome to People Love Process. It's been nearly three years since Kobe Bryant and his daughter were killed in a helicopter crash. The news stunned people all around the world, and I wanted to create an illustration honoring him in a fun and creative way. So in this movie, we're going to do just that. So let's get started. Now, I don't do a whole lot of portraits, but this isn't going to be anything close to realism. It's just going to be a fun, stylized illustration of sorts. But I still want to reflect the real person, in this case, Kobe Bryant. So I looked at reference photos of Kobe Kobe Bryant just to see the overall aesthetic of his facial emotions, uh, especially when he's playing. So here's some reference just to look at Kobe. Now a classic uh, pose of Kobe Bryant uh, early in his career. This when he is a rookie, and you can tell that because the number on his jersey is different than what he retired with. Now I work for Upper Deck Company, a uh, memorabilia company that does sports cards for uh, NBA, NFL, and Major League Baseball. And when I first started working there, one of the first projects I worked on because Upper Deck signed Kobe Bryant to. Uh, be one of their, um, not sponsors, but one of their spokespersons. Uh, we also had Ken Griffey Jr. as a spokesperson as well uh, back in the day. So I was assigned a Kobe Bryant subset in an NBA basketball line of cards. And so I got to look at a lot of photography. We had our own uh, network of photographers that would go to games of different sports, whether it's NBA, whether it's Major League Baseball, and they'd take uh, photo shoots of different players, and then we could use those on the cards that we designed. So I looked at a lot of poses of Kobe, but this one is kind of the one that inspired me. I wanted him to be kind of going through the air, driving to the hoop. This is where my rough, crude sketch started. And I decided instead of the ball being over his head, I wanted him to be kind of... Uh, kind of carrying it underneath him where he transfers it from one hand to the next and then it ends up in a dunk. Now, this is a pretty crude sketch and the pose isn't working too well here. This is where I'll just simply use Google image search uh, to bring up images in this case of other players doing just that. Now, I've seen Kobe do it, but if you look at the top right here, I'm not sure what player it is, but this is a slam dunk competition. He's passing the ball under one leg to his other hand, and then you'll swing it over the top of his head and slam it. Here's another one where he's doing the same thing here. Here's one down below, and this one I really like. This is the one that inspired um, how to revise mine to get that same aesthetic. It's just facing the opposite way. Here's another one. So this is the reference I'll look at just to make sure my pose is, is going to communicate the right way. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a realistic style. There's a lot of forgiveness. We're kind of doing it in a, a novelty sort of way. But after I did a new rough sketch, I did like how this pose was working. I liked his legs. I liked the exaggeration of the size of his legs and head, etc. I think his head looks a little goofy. I was just kind of messing around with that. At times, he'll put his tongue out, almost like uh, Jordan did when when he played, but I didn't like this head. And Kobe, early in his career, had hair, but as he went on, he just went completely bald for most of his career. So I decided to draw different ways of handling up here with a, a bald head. Um, I also, he has a nickname called the Black Mamba, and I thought maybe I could work that into the design somehow, start drawing that down there and kind of abandon that. I thought it looked a little goofy. Uh, and then experimented with some hair here for no other reason than uh, when I'm in this mode, I'm just kind of doing whatever pops in the head. And I kind of like this head, but obviously Kobe never had that hair. And of course, a basketball hoop. Now, once again, this is just rough sketching, but drawing is a progressive skill. Uh, overall, in the, the, the kind of high context of drawing, you always want to draw. Whether or not you ever want to become a full-blown illustrator or not isn't the point. It improves the creative process. You're going to be able to pull off more design concepts 
if you develop the skill of drawing and you only get better the more you do it. So it doesn't matter uh, how bad you may think you are when you start, just stick with it and you're going to see improvement. Now, it's hard to see that improvement as you go along. So make sure to look back like four months prior to what you drew then and compare it to how you're drawing now and you're going to see improvement and that will encourage you and help you sustain that skill because it's a, it's a creative skill you can use for a lifetime of creativity. Now, normally at this point is where I would show you my final refined sketch and we'd set the opacity. We're going to do that, but there's one step in between I usually don't show. This shows um, a sheet of my Nina vellum. Well, it's not vellum. It's just called translucent stock. And if you want to find out more about that, just go to um, the page on my website. Uh, you can find that at PPL luv.com. It'll take you that page. There's a link for the Nina stock that I use. It's like vellum. It's like tracing paper. It's just a lot better. I've been drawing on it for about 20 years now. Uh, but this just shows you how I'll cut out pieces. So this head, I cut out and taped it to this one and this one. I experimented with maybe working in his number into it. I eventually abandoned that idea wanted to put a little bird into it to imply he's flying through the air even kind of tried coming up with like a little brand mark but it's not bad but i ended up just kind of abandoning that along the way what i'm going to do though is i'm going to scan this in uh, to Adobe uh, Photoshop, and then I'm going to edit it into the final refined sketch you're going to see. Now, when I drew the basketball hoop, um, I didn't want to put just a backboard that's normal on it. So I decided to put a cloud because that kind of goes with my theme here of kind of like an angel. I drew out the net in just simple lines, but I wouldn't want to build this with strokes. It'd be too perfect. I want to get some nice thick and thins in it. So I drew out those shapes over here. So I take all of this and I use my flatbed scanner to scan it in. So what I end up with is a nice refined sketch like this. You can see that Kobe Bryant is the main focus of this composition. Uh, the hoop itself and the cloud and the bird are all secondary reads. You see them, but you first look at Kobe and he's the focus. That's what I wanted it to be. So this is where I'll select this, go to the transparency palette, adjust the opacity in this case we'll set it to 15 and then i lock the layer so the first thing i want to do is i want to do some vector uh, building let's go to graphic styles i'm going to click on my smallest style which is 0.25 that sets the the stroke weight and then we're going to zoom in because i'm not going to build everything here i'm just going to build an area of this that is definitely part of um uh, what I would call organic building. And just as a place to start, usually a good place to start is wherever somewhere in your drawing comes to a point, gets a point. Those are easy, but we'll go to the pin tool here and let's make sure we're on the right layer. And we're going to start right about where this, um, uh, his jersey, the top part of it hits his shoulder. So we'll start here. And all I'm going to do is click here and then I can decide where do I want to place the next anchor point. Do I want to go all the way up here or do I put one at a midpoint? Well, you could put one right about here. And usually when I build, I just pull out my handles far enough to see them. But I don't, I'm not trying to complete the full curve here. We're going to actually go past the bottom of his chin. Then if we consider this line the point where his chin goes to, that'll get a point. And then as we're going along this curve, think like a clock, as you've seen in several other uh, uh, videos of mine on this channel. It's the method I teach in my book called the clockwork method. We're going to put one at what I would call a six o'clock position here, and I'll just pull it out. Then wherever it comes to a point gets a point. These are easy to discern. Here, here, we'll go here. Now, there's a couple ways you could build his nose. I could go like this and then go to the next one, come back and round the nose. But on an illustration like this, um, I like doing it a little more organic. And what I do is you're coming into the curve. This is where you want the point. And so click and pull just to reveal those handles like that. Go to the next point. You're coming out of the curve. Click and pull to create your handles kind of like 
kind of like this. Then as it comes up to the top of his head, this would be like a 12 o'clock position on a clock. We'll pull up those handles. This would be a three o'clock position like this. Then we'll go down here. This is like nine o'clock position going the opposite way, bending the opposite way that is like that. And then as we get down to the shoulders, this is where you can decide where you want to place an anchor point. I wouldn't want to go all the way down here where I want to stop because that's too far of a distance to control this curve. So I'd figure out somewhere around here is where I'd want to put um, another anchor point just to balance it like that. Then I would go all the way down here and maybe we stop right about there. So if we look at this and let's go to our stroke. Yeah, we got this at one, let's put it at five. I usually like building uh, thinner so I can see my drawing underneath. This is what I call a rough build. Then at this point, I'll just go back in with the direct selection tool, select anchor points, grab the Bezier handles and just pull it up to um, perfect these curves to match my underlying drawing like this. It's not hard, it just takes time like that. I'll probably come in here and adjust this curve on his shoulder, pull this down like that. And then if I wanna get access to this one, notice there is no handle here. This is why I usually um, will use a plugin that's called uh, Passcribe because as soon as I select a path, notice these nodes come up and it gives me access to the handle. It's very helpful, it's very intuitive. That's why I love plugins. Um, you can do it in Illustrator, it's just not super intuitive and you have to um, uh, kind of pay attention to it. And I'll, I'll show you over here with this one. So we don't have a handle pulled out here, so if I wanted a handle, you could go to the anchor point tool here. I could grab this and you could pull it out. Now notice it's wanting to snap like this. This is where you'll want to toggle on and off uh, your smart guides. So we're going to toggle them off, command U to do that. You also use command U to toggle them back on. I don't want the handle to be on this side, so I'll use the same anchor point tool to retract it like that. That'll give us access to this handle. Then I'll finesse these curves with the rest of our paths here on this one. So up here, if we want to get access to this handle again, you go here or you could just grab this path and pull it out and give access to that handle. Then you can grab it like that. So that's how you do it uh, natively in Illustrator. The only reason I use plugins isn't because, um, well, some things aren't possible in Illustrator natively. Uh, that's why I use some plugins, but most of the plugins, there are native methods for doing it and you can do it, it just takes longer. It, ju it just takes a little longer and plugins speed up the process and uh, at times are a bit more precise than how Adobe has designed to uh, design the software. So the anchor point tool is also good for grabbing a path and just bending it kind of like this. Once again, I don't use this so much. I use a plugin called Subscribe that was around about six years prior to uh, Adobe kind of ripping off the same feature and implementing it in a less intuitive way. And I've covered that in, in other movies. What do I mean by that? Well, if you go to the anchor point uh, tool and you double click on it, well, nothing's gonna happen. It's a one size fits all. Uh, if you go to subscribe, which is the, the plugin I used six years before Illustrator ever added this and I double click it, you get all kinds of Pathscribe preferences you can set. So the plugins and the tools that you use work the way you prefer it to use, not how some engineer decided, who doesn't even use Illustrator, uh, decided it should be. So that's why I like uh, supporting uh, those who make plugins and using them because it makes my life a whole lot easier and it gives you access to these little nodes which are ghost handles one I love that they named him ghost handles it's just a cool name and I'll go in here and finesse it I don't like leaving any straight lines I think it looks better when things aren't straight because nothing in nature is perfect like that especially the human form um uh, here's another plugin. This one is called the Reposition Points Tool. Um, I requested this years ago at an Adobe Max when I was hanging out with the Stute Graphics, and I said, at times I'd like to just be able to slide it down a path into the proper position. 
and lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, they added a plugin. It's called the reposition points. To, let's just look at it. Reposition point tool. Um, I call it the Vaughn tool because uh, I take credit for uh, giving them that idea to add into it. So that's how I create a more organic pose like this. And you, you might be thinking, well, why did you overlap it here? Well, I'll show you why I did that. Let's go ahead and close this path like this. We'll go to the uh, Pathfinder palette and I'll go Unite. Now notice when I hit Unite, what happens, that overlap area, it just gets consumed within that shape. So uh, that's how I would create an organic path like this. Um, obviously, I'm not going to build the whole design. I just wanted to show that because the, the principles um, are simple. You just need to take your time. And if you take your time and just think out where to place your anchor points, because if we select this, we only have, let's see, how many anchor points do we have this? We only have 15 anchor points to do this. So it's all about using the least amount of anchor points, but giving you full control over the path and shape you're creating. So I just wanted to cover that. I think that's an important principle in vector building. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this off. And this is where contour continuation comes in. Now, here's the full shape. I actually created the exact same way. You see the overlap here. I haven't united it. But this shape and, and the principle of contour continuation is what I learned in art school. Let's go ahead and select this and we'll unite it to get rid of that overlap. But I have this set up like this because I want this line to kind of run down through the back part of his arm into the ball. His head goes into his back, goes all the way down his back like that. So this is how I created that full shape. Now we want to create the right arm. All I did is I continued where I had it here, going into here, and we have an anchor point right here. So all I need to do is I'll go ahead and zoom in on this. And this is where I'll go back to that ancient tool that's been there since day one, the scissor tool. And if I go command U to turn um, smart guides back on, it'll tell me right where I'm at the anchor and then I'll cut it. And so I'll get rid of this part because we don't need it. Then I'll go back to the pin tool and all I'm going to do is close the shape out for his left arm. So we'll do this like that. Let's double click into isolation mode. Make sure that that corner is joined. So we have a closed shape now like this. Let's go and zoom back in so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this shape. I'll make a copy of it. And if you have the con contextual menu bar on, you can hit the duplicate button with this shape selected. But I just use F3 because I find keyboard shortcuts are still faster. And the contextual menu bar, in my opinion, kind of gets in the way. Let's move this to the same layer as the arm. We'll select this uh, left arm here, or actually it's Kobe's right arm, I guess. And then we'll take the basketball, which is one of the easiest shapes in this design to create. It's just elliptical shape. Uh, we're going to clone it. Command C, Command F. I'll fill it so you can see it's on top. Select the arm and we'll trim the bottom part of his arm. So now uh, this style I'm working on is one that I call segmented. And it's inspired by one of my favorite artists that um, I kind of was attracted to when I was a kid. His name is Jim Flora. And uh, you, if you watch my lecture that I did at Hartford Art School uh, that was um, posted just a few weeks back, uh, you can check uh, out that inspiration. And I have all of his album art he created in the 50s uh, framed outside my studio. So the, the reason why I like contour continuation, this is a principle I was taught in design class at art school, but I use it in illustration. It helped me develop this style that was inspired by Jim Flora. So keep that in mind. Um, an artist who inspired me by a certain style he did. And so it inspired me to create this style and a principle of thinking, design thinking that I applied to illustration uh, from another creative professional. So you can develop your own skills, develop your own aesthetic look and feel by being inspired by what other people do and share with you. I think that's so important. 
uh, it, it's that mentorship aspect, whether it's uh, mentorship in a traditional way uh, where you're actually going to somebody and they're showing you how to do things or they just share it open source now online through their own resources. Um, it's a great way to learn, and it's something that you can lock into and develop your skills over a lifetime. So now we have the left arm, but that contour continuation, it goes from his head into his shoulder, down through his leg, and into the ball. And notice this shape here on the ball will kind of connect to that. So it kind of carries your eye through the design. That's what I'm doing here. Let's turn on his leg and shirt. And so I just picked up on the leg and shirt from the back part here, and it just flows down down his back into, well, <laughs> right into his bottom, up along the bottom part of his leg over here, the top part of his leg, and it swings back into his shirt. Now, once again, this is a closed path, but it's overlapping, so I'm going to hit Unite, and all that does, we'll have to ungroup it, is it just creates a separate piece, and that's fine, because all of these are going to be filled shapes, not strokes. Uh, so that's how we want to do it. Now, as I'm going, this style can be a bit confusing, and it's one of the hardest styles for me to create because you have to pay attention when you're doing it because you can easily delete something you probably shouldn't. And as I go along, I tend to take a shape like this, and I'll uh, Command C, Command F, I'll just clone it, and then I'm going to drag it up, and I put it in my X layer, and I just drop it there. So this is my vector junk drawer. So if I ever need to go back to it, I have a copy there. But on this, we're going to copy this leg. So I'll just hit my F3 key, which is my keyboard shortcut. Again, if you haven't watched my keyboard shortcut movie on People Love, make sure to check it out. You can set up common routines. I'm going to select that, select this original shape, and I'm going to minus front. So we're just going to chop it out, and then I'm going to go ungroup. And all I've done is separated this top half from the bottom half down here. And on this bottom half, we're going to select uh, the basketball, and we're going to go ahead and clone that, Command-C, Command-F, select this shape, and intersect it. And that gives us this part of the basketball. So one shape informs on the other shape. That's the, the point I'm trying to make here. Um, of course, I'll build uh, the shape of this arm in here. And once again, these will interact with the other shapes. Like I'll use the leg shape here with this shape to create this little piece that ends up being part of uh, his shorts of his, uh, well, actually this will be a segment part of his arm, but it also uh, creates two separate shapes for the shorts that end up being his jersey as well. Of course, we built the wing, but on the wing, I just built it as one stroke like this because we're going to use this shape a couple times to edit other shapes. Once again, one shape will uh, kind of influence how you create and edit other shapes. Uh, that's why the style can be confusing. That's why I colored these lines different and I keep them on different la uh, layers. Uh, because even after working this style for now, what, 17 years, um, I can get confused at times. So we're going to take this, we're going to clone it, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'll change the color to a blue. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this anchor, pull it away, and then I'm going to create a closed shape. So I'm going to go like this, and we'll close that shape like that. Why did I do that? Well, because we want to take his body, We'll make a copy of this, Command-C, Command-F, and then I'll take this shape, and we're going to go intersect. Let's go ahead and recolor it to this magenta. All I've done is I've created just the top part of his head and neck. I wanted that to be a distinctly separate shape. We'll, we'll go ahead and copy this shape again. And sometimes it's easier to go into... Um, uh, um, isolation mode like this. We'll pull this one away again. And all we're going to do is create the same type of shape we did previously. We'll fill it just so you can see what I'm doing. I'll take this shape that still has the head, which we don't want, and I'll take this shape and I'll go minus front. So all we've done is we've separated the bottom part of that shape 
and the top part of that shape so we can color them differently as we go forward. Uh, so not hard. And this is where I'll focus on different uh, areas. Let's go ahead and turn on the shoe and the sock over here. And it's easier to build this whole shoe shape and this shape that's going to be uh, representative of his sock because all the shoe parts are just more shapes. So it's easier to, be sh to build shape and edit with shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, toe shape here, or the front part of the toe of the shoe, and we'll make a copy of it. We'll go ahead and fill it with blue, and we'll use that to trim this shape like that. Then I'll go ahead and take the shoe shape, I'll clone it, and I'll take the, uh, the tip of the shoe and I'll intersect it. That gives us that. I'll take this shape, clone it, take this shape, trim off the bottom here like that. And then we're going to go ahead and take, let's see, this shape and I'll clone it. We'll fill it with blue again to take this shape and I'll minus front there. I might go into here like that. And this is where you might want to zoom in. So you can see this right here. I'll just, if I pull it, this is still around. So I'll go to the anchor point tool, retract that. So it's not like that. And then I can take a copy of the sock, make sure that's on top so we'll drag that to this layer select this minus front and that gives us that shape and then once we have that shape you can see as i'm doing this you might be going okay i'm a little confused and that's why you it's easier to um uh color things differently so you know what you need to do now this is working fine but I don't want this tongue to stick over into these so what i need to do is make a copy of this shape and we'll color this let's color it green fill and we'll take this sock and we'll make a copy and color that green fill i'll take these two shapes and we'll unite them now when you do this do you ever run into this you might be thinking yeah i hate when that happens well so do i most of the time you can fix it by just hitting unite again and it'll resolve it. Not always, but most of the time. So that's how you can fix it. Uh, select the tongue. If not, then it's just a pain. You have to go in and edit all those unnecessary anchor points. Um, so I'm going to select the tongue, select this shape. We'll go minus front and the tongue's ready to go. Now the tongue is going to be filled. So it doesn't matter that this part of the shoe is showing underneath. It'll be covered. And then the last thing I need to do is select the shoe shape and we'll select this and we'll go intersect select the shoe shape again clone it select this part and go intersect and that's how i would get all of these sections of the shoe all aligned and of course the swoosh kind of swooshy not as it's not the exact the swoosh i should say it's a kind of artistic license on that uh, but actually, I think Kobe started with Adidas when I was at Upper Deck. I think that's who did all the shoes. And then Nike won him over at some point. Now, some of this artwork, it's easy to create with the lips. Now, obviously, if we zoom in on his head, you know, his eye, that's an elliptical shape. We'll take these two, that we can... Uh, use Pathfinder, of course, his ear is just elliptical shape, the halo we have up here. And if we look at the backboard, it's just a bunch of elliptical shapes. So if I go ahead and select all of these shapes with this secondary shape I created to fill in and we go unite, it'll just unite into everything. There might be an artifact just select it, delete it. I would take this elliptical shape and I go ahead and copy it. We'll fill it and then we'll trim it like that. So that's how I create that. And it's a lot faster than using the pin tool to go click, click, click to try to create an organic shape. Just think in shapes, build in shapes. It'll make the process go faster. Here's our netting. That's going to work great. And our final base art for this design looks like this and you can see I have a background in it at this point uh, but I wasn't sure um, 
how to utilize this. I did develop a tonal family. So these are all the colors we're going to use in it. And um, on some of the shading, I want to go over a little bit of that. So what I want to do is we'll take this color, which will be the base color. And then we want a shading value. So I'm going to go up here and I'll uh, sample that. And then I'll go to transparency. We're going to go ahead and multiply this and to control the value because 100% uh, doesn't look too great. We're going to go 35% and that'll create a shading value. This is the same base color. This base color here is this color right here. This is the same base color, but we've because we're using global uh, color, we can tint it. So this is just an 85% tint. I'll select the middle. I'll sample the darkest brown here like that. We'll go ahead and set this to multiply as well. But because it's on a lighter background, we'll go 25%. And that's the value I'll use uh, for shading on this. Now, this is segmented. So these uh, colors, um, these colors uh, will be going right up against each other. There's nothing that separates them, no gap of white or anything like this. So we'll select these colors and we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and colorize this. So we'll do that. Let's zoom in so we can see how it's going here. I'll take the inside of his mouth. We don't want outlines on these. This will be a nice black here. And then his eye, get rid of the outline. This will just be white. And then on this color, let's make this the dark color. This will be the same base. And what we're going to use here, let's go over here. We'll color these, the shadow value that we created like that to create the shading. And this is all I'm going to do on this design is start uh, coloring everything. Now, I'm not going to color all of it. I just want to uh, kind of explain it. So uh, what I want to do, because um, I'll have like if we color this one, um, this color, ah, I deselected it. If we color it that, that'll work. But maybe this one, we want to be a little darker as it's swinging out. So those are the decisions I'll make as I'm coloring it. This will probably be a darker area since not light, not a lot of light is hitting it. And then we will change the value so we have that nice contrast between a shadow and the base color. Since this is further back, maybe this is a little darker, but not super dark. And that's all I'm going to do to colorize all of this. Now, um, I'm not going to spend a, a lot of time coloring this, but this is the principle I used. So ultimately, all the base color looks like this when we get done coloring it. So you can see the segmented style is, is kind of fun. Now, as I was working on this, I realized um, I kind of goofed up. No, well, I didn't goof up. I just forgot something that I, I should have remembered as I was looking at my reference. And that is Kobe Bryant uh, plays for, played for the Lakers his whole career. And the Lakers colors are purple and gold. And I think I forgot some of the purple on his uniform. But one thing I really forgot as Kobe always played with these sleeves on. So we're going to go back to our graphic styles and I'm going to take this and let's say, I'm just going to go to the pin tool here and oops, make sure we're on the right layer like this. And I'm just going to create a shape here like this, go to the anchor point tool because I want to create a sleeve as if it's wrapping around his arm, kind of like this. Select this and I'll uh, duplicate it. Command C, Command F. I just use my keyboard shortcut. And then we'll go to Pathfinder and I'll go intersect. And then we're going to color this purple like this because he'd always wear these arm sleeves uh, that were purple. And actually, since it's further back, we're going to make that a little darker so there's more contrast, something like that. And I think that looks good. So uh, always be keeping in mind that. And what do I mean by sleeve? Well, these were the sleeves he used. So that's kind of what 
um, I forgot about. So um, I worked that in. I just didn't want to forget it. Now, the only thing I didn't like at this point, and I should point out, I added teeth because the more, like, if uh, just let's go back to what we had. Here's what I had. And the more I looked at this, I go, oh, hey, man, it looks like, like he lost his teeth. <laughs> That doesn't look good. So I went back in and I'm always trying to improve things as I, I go forward. So I put teeth in. Uh, so he's smiling. You see his teeth. And the background, though, I'm going, well, that's kind of boring. Maybe I should do some. Well, and then I thought, well, wait a minute. He's flying through the air. Maybe I should make it like clouds. I'm already showing a cloud is like kind of the backboard of the hoop. So this is where I went to Adobe Stock and I grabbed this photograph and then I just brought it into Photoshop, turned it into a grayscale image, uh, kind of vignetted the edges so it feathered off, but it's just a grayscale tiff. And I did that so I could just select this and I can just copy it, go to here, and I'll go paste. Oops, make sure we're on the right layer. Click here and go paste into place, Command F. Then I can copy it and paste behind this. So we can get rid of this background, and now we have this shape. And if I select this and just color it blue, look how cool that looks. And as, as soon as I did this, I go, wow, that's what I should have done to begin with. So uh, always fun to work that way. And now the final base colors, because I did realize I forgot some of the colors in the uniform. So I went back in and added those colors in. This is what that looks like, and I think that looks good. But uh, one of the problems that I think on this is the wings are kind of getting a little lost here. So this is where I want to improve that contrast. So I just take an elliptical shape like this, and if you go to graphic styles, you can just click this graphic style. But if if you don't know how to do this, this is just an elliptical um um, gradient. So if I go to the gradient palette, you can see it's just the a radial gradient that is, and it just goes from the blue to white, and that's all you need to do. Not hard. I just thought I'd make it easy uh, by putting it in the uh, graphic styles. If we go to transparency, you'll want to make this multiply in 60, and all we're going to do is slide it over, over the background, and then I'm going to cut it, and then I'll select Kobe and I'll go Command B and I'll paste behind it and it improves the contrast between the wings and the background so they sit off a little bit. That's all I wanted to do. Now it's at this point I'm going, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should put like a, a nice glow around Kobe. So I took all the shapes of his like this and I can select this and we'll just fill it with uh, white and we'll get rid of the outline like that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Effect and I'll go to Gaussian Blur. Here, Gaussian Blur. And we'll set this. Well, we don't want to do, do it that much. That's way too much. We're just going to do, I don't know, 18 points like that. And then I'll copy it to the clipboard, I'll select Kobe, and I'll go Command B to paste behind. And when I did this, I like some of it. I just thought it kind of got a little lost in other areas. So I decided ultimately not to go that route. But on the Halo, um, I did like the halo kind of having a glow for it. So I went ahead and added a nice little glow around the halo. So I just turned that on like this. And now all the subtle detailing that we used other shading values on, I'm going to turn those on. So notice like in the basketball hoop, it really kind of makes that more lively, adding just those subtle shadows. And I do that on Kobe just to distinguish uh, segmented areas of this illustration. And then, of course, the little bird put him here. So he's chirping away. And um, my daughter, Savannah, she's always checking out what I'm working on. And uh, she saw this and she's going, she, you, you need to add detail on the bottom of the shoe. I go, what? And she goes, well, you see the bottom of his shoe on his, on his left leg. You should have some tread detail. And she's right. So I added that in and I like that even better. Now, 
Um, I'm happy with how this artwork turned out. I think it captures his friendly and fun nature, and he'll definitely be missed. He was always a fun player to watch, but he was a, a good human, too, off the court. So remember the exercise files for each of my People of Process movies can always be accessed via a link in the description below. And all the resources I showed in this movie are included with the these source files for this movie. So YouTube tells channel content creators like myself that a simple like helps me uh, to grow this channel. So even that level of interaction by you, the viewer, is appreciated. Of course, you can always subscribe or comment, send a super chat, or become a member as well, and it all helps me to produce new original content I can share with you. Until next time, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.